Good morning. My name is Maria Francisca Zabalaga Haberman, and I will be presenting to you, Do I Sell Funny to You? The Role of Instructor Gender and Accent on Student Learning and Evaluation in a Digital Learning Environment. I would like to point out to you my email address as well as my Twitter handle, so if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. When we look at the diversity of higher ed faculty, the data from the National Center for Education Statistics shows that in 1991, most of the higher education faculty was white or Caucasian. 20 years later, we can see how the field has diversified. However, it is still not representative of the United States population. When we look at the same data based on sex, we can see that in 1991, the higher ed workforce was mostly male. In 2017, the percent of female faculty has increased. However, it is still not 50% and it is not representative of the United States population. Now, why do we care? Well, in academia, student evaluation of instructors is the most utilized assessment of educators, which in turn can influence faculty promotion, tenure, and career trajectory. However, literature demonstrates that students' implicit bias and stereotype expectations can negatively impact the evaluation of instructors. In our previous study by Budnovsky and Lee, they found that male voice containing different ethnic accents influenced students' evaluations of instructors in the digital resource, despite of consistent positive learning outcomes. Based on these results, we expanded the experimental condition to test a female voice instructor. The aim of our study was to assess the learning outcomes and evaluation of digital resources narrated by a female voice with different ethnic qualities. Our hypothesis was that the students will rate the female instructor with a, navy, a native English accent higher than instructors with a foreign accent. For our study, four identical digital resources introducing the histology, embryology, and anatomy of the pituitary gland were created. All resources identical in content and narrated by the same female voice actor in four different accents, Chinese, British, American, and Indian. I have a short clip of each one of them for you to listen. Here is the Chinese accent. There are two main categories of cells within the adenal hypothesis, chromophiles and chromophobes. British accent. There are two main categories of cells within the adenohypothesis, chromophiles and chromophobes. American accent? There are two main categories of cells within the adenohypothesis, chromophiles and chromophobes. And finally, the Indian accent. There are two main categories of cells within the adenohypothesis, chromophiles and chromophobes. For our study, 126 professional science students who had not yet learned any aspect of the pituitary gland were recruited to participate in a COMIRB exempt randomized single blind study. All students took the same pre-quiz, followed by a randomly assigned digital resource identical in content but with a different accent. Then, students took the same post-quiz, which was different than the pre-quiz to control for repeated quiz effect, but tested the same content knowledge, followed by the same survey, assessing both the digital resource as well as the instructor. Data analysis for learning outcomes and survey were completed, including theme analysis for student comments. The learning outcomes showed a significant increase in post-quiz scores across all four accent groups, with an effect size of 0.53, and no significant difference between the groups, suggesting that learning occurs from the digital resources and that narrator accent has no effect in learning, which is consistent with previous studies. Of the 126 study participants, 107 completed the survey. Students from all four groups rated the learning module higher than the narrator, with an effect size of 0.14, and no significant difference across the four groups was noticed, suggesting that students care more about the learning module than the accent or qualities of the professor. Thematic analysis showed similar things for both groups. In general, students felt that their assigned digital resource was informative and enhanced their learning. Identify areas of improvement where that the voice of the narrator was boring or monotone. Interestingly enough, there was no comment about the instructor accent or having difficulties understanding the accent of the instructor. 
Analysis and comparison of the male instructor and the female instructor studies show significant improvement post-quiz performance for both studies, with an effect size of 0 0.064 and no significant difference across the four digital resources or accents, demonstrating that learning occurs regardless of the instructor accent. Performance increased comparison between the both studies showed no significant difference between the male instructor and the female instructor z-scores, suggesting that the perceived gender of the instructor had no impact on learning outcomes, which is consistent with the literature. In conclusion, we see that learning outcomes and instructor evaluations are unaffected by female instructor accents, which lead us to reject our hypotheses, as the students in the female instructor study did not show any implicit bias in the instructor evaluation. Students focus on the design, content, and quality of the learning module rather than the accent of qualities of, or qualities of the professor. The comparison between the male instructor and the female instructor study showed no significant difference on performance increase between both studies, suggesting that learning outcomes are not affected by perceived instructor gender. Some of our limitations were the sample size. We had a small sample size, especially for the male instructor study, with only 54 participants. Diversity of participants not only in race and ethnicity, but also in educational background, as most of our participants were white and either pharmacy students or masters in modern human anatomy students. For future directions, we will recommend repeating the study with a bigger sample size, especially for the male instructor study, and expanding the study to additional populations to increase diversity in race and ethnicity and also in educational background, so medical, dental, and nursing schools as well and a more complete comparison analysis of our previous male instructor study and the current female instructor study. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge uh, my mentor, Dr. Lisa MJ Lee, as well as everyone else who has made this project possible. Um, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you listening. <laughs>